Hey guys, welcome back to Never Alone Homestead. My name is Cammie. Well guys, it's that time of the year again. It's time for canning. And I've been doing a lot of canning as you can see, but I want to show you how to can carrots. Now I have been thinning out some carrots. Also check out that video on how to sow carrot seeds with great germination. It's simple, it's easy. I got abundance of harvest and I'm gonna show you some of that harvest. So let's go take a look at the carrots. But before we do that, also check out this sink. I have a video on the best kitchen sink for the homestead. I love this kitchen sink and you're gonna see why. So here's the carrots and they, they've got some good nice sizes in here, but also um, we've got some smaller sizes because they're thinning out. And there's nothing wrong with these carrots, little baby carrots. And so uh, the first step you're going to do is that once you pull them out of the ground or your soil, your raised bed, your garden, what you're going to do is you're going to wash them off outside and get as much dirt off as you can. Then I take it in here and I fill this sink up with water or put some water in there. And then I take my scrub brush and the water's running. And then I take and scrub all the dirt off that I can get off. And at the same time with the water in the sink, um, it still is uh, softening any dirt on there. You want to try to get uh, the carrots out and go ahead and start washing them up so that dirt won't dry on there. But you put the water in here and you're just going to swash those carrots around in here. And then you're going to take your scrub brush and you're going to scrub. And then all the dirt pretty much comes off. I don't see any dirt on here. I'm very happy with this um, carrot right here. So the next step is, is that we're going to just cut the ends off of these carrots. And then the next step after that is that we're going to be slicing. We're just going to take and slice these carrots up in a certain width. So let's get to slicing. Now, before we do that, this is this kitchen sink. I love this kitchen sink. It's big enough to put my canner in here to wash it. Uh, I can wash dishes in here, a ton of dishes. I can put my canning jars in here and wash them and set them over here or wash my dishes and set them over here. As you can tell, this makes it perfect. So when I'm washing these carrots off or whatever vegetable I may be washing off, then I can set it right here. It can be draining a little bit. So this is like a multi go-to sink. I love this sink. So if the other homestead definitely already got one of these sinks, this is a must to have at any home because it's so beneficial. Like I said, I love this side, but um, I don't have any drain board. I never have a drain board. Now, I do use a dishwasher at times, but this little side right here really puts a lot of dishes in there. And, you know, when you're canning, you have a tendency to be washing dishes, washing something or another. Um, and so this over here is a good place to dry it, good place to get it out of your way. But nevertheless, let's get to canning. So now I got all the carrots chopped up and what I use to help save time is this little chopper right here. It's a vegetable chopper and you get one of these off of Amazon. Actually I got this at CVS a long time ago. It's got different little slicers to it right here. So it makes it really convenient. So I love this little ordeal right here. It does dice your or slice your carrots a little bit smaller and probably you would. Now, remember all of these was like um, thinning out the carrots. But to me, that's a pretty good size. So, so what I'm saying is that thinning out the carrots, I'm going to have smaller carrots here and it's going to be just fine. So my next step now is to get my jars and start filling up the jars. So, I made the video and then I tried to upload it and it had no sound. So now we've got different carrots, actually with different sizes. I went and pulled some more carrots, and um, this time I'm going to be using quarts. And before I did 14 pints. So the quarts are going to go for 30 minutes, the pints are going to go for 25 minutes. Now the reason I did these different sizes is just something new. There are so many different sizes here which they'll can just the same. Now all these carrots here I chopped up or sliced by hand. I didn't use the little chopper. And uh, and that's pretty much it. It takes a, a little bit longer doing it this way. 
to get yourself comfortable in front of the TV and get to slicing. So it's very easy. And you hear the, the freshness of these carrots because these carrots was just pulled today. So our next step is, is that in these forks right here, I've already got one, um, one teaspoon of salt, the canning salt. So in this one right here, I've got one can, one teaspoon of canning salt. And this one right here, I'm going to put one teaspoon of canning salt. Into this pint right here, I'm going to put a half a teaspoon of canning salt. Now I have honestly done it to where I didn't put the salt in it and put either for pints, one half teaspoon of sugar or one teaspoon of uh, sugar for the quarts. So our next step is, is that you're going to have hot boiling water. You just boil some onto the stove. And then you're just going to fill your jars. And the best way to do this is to pour it slowly because there's so many carrots in there that it's going to be hard to get a debubbler in there. So by pouring it slowly, it helps to minimize the air bubbles. Another way I like to do is if you're taking a packet down, you go like that, and that will settle the carrots, and any air bubbles that's in there will start rising to the top. And a lot of times I'll take when I'm putting my carrots in, I'll just take and stop halfway in between and, and pat down like that, and it helps settle the carrots. So that little pouncing right there has already helped the water to settle down just a little bit more. So we're going to set that one aside. And we're going to continue filling. And I'm pouring a little bit too fast on that one because my mom was thinking, I need to fill those other jars. So we're just going to continue filling the jars with hot water and uh, let me show you. So I'm going to fill this jar here with my carrots and what I like to do just like I do with my sweet potatoes, I just kind of like let them fall in so they situate their cell. Especially when you got different sizes of carrots. Now, this is a lot of carrots in these jars, but I've got more carrots out there to pull. So I like to take carrots and just have them by themselves as a side dish. And you're going to fill the hot water up to that ring right there. So I'll continue filling those up with hot water. Then our next step after we've got them filled up with hot water is we're just going to wipe the lid, the little ring up here, the top off. And then we're going to finger tight. Now, Ball says that you don't have to boil these anymore, these lids and these rings. Now, if I've got time, I like to go ahead and do that. But I've been canning a lot. 
so I have been panning a lot and so I haven't had any problems I've had all my lids to seal these jars here have been washed and sterilized and so now this is ready for the canner the canner is over there starting to heat up and now, now these warm jars will be going into a warm canner so the timer just went off for 10 minutes and you cannot see the vent I can feel it but you can't see the vent um, the steam coming out you definitely can feel it usually in the daytime you can see it but you definitely can hear it so now what we're going to do is cut our timer off and put our weight on and what's going to happen it's going to start building pressure you can see right there it's starting to build and it's going to take a little bit and it's going to go up to 10 pounds of pressure it gradually crawls up there now it is at 10 pounds of pressure so what I'm going to do is reach over here and you got to know your stove I'm going to put it at 3 and from here on out we're going to watch it I'm also going to set my timer for 25 minutes So since I've cut it down, it's very crucial to watch it and make sure it does not drop below the 10 pounds. If it drops below the 10 pounds, then you have to stop, start your timing. you got to get your pressure regulated, but you got to start your timing all the way back over to 25 minutes for pints and 30 minutes for quarts. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to watch this. If I see that it's crawling, keeps crawling up. Then I'm going to reach over there and cut that down just a little bit more. And then once again, you have to stand near your canner because it can go below 10 pounds or it could keep climbing. So once it gets pretty regulated, probably about maybe about 10 minutes, um, of staying at the 10 pounds of pressure, most time it'll stay right there. But you can't walk away from your canner because I find out that every time I can, it the pressure canner can do something differently. They're not dangerous. You just got to follow the guidelines, the instructions. Um, so that's why you need to read your manual before operating. So now what I'm going to do is just stand here and watch and make sure that that stays at 10 pounds of pressure. And if it stays at 10 pounds of pressure, then I do not have to mess with my temperature controller over there. And... Uh, then it was, if it stays at 10 pounds of pressure, of course the timer is going to go down. And when the timer goes off, all I'm going to do is then cut the temperature, cut the stove off. And then wait for this PSI, this 10 pounds of pressure, to drop back to zero. And then this right here, as you see it is raised up, it will plop down. And then you wait a few minutes and then you can take your lid off. So now the timer has gone off. We're just going to reach over here and cut the timer off. We're going to cut this off. Now you can take your canner and pick it up and move it to the next burner. Um, it is going to be heavy. So since I have more jars and this canner here, I'm just going to let it sit here and let the PSI go back down to zero. And when it does, this little thing right here is going to plop down. You'll hear it plop down. And then you're going to wait a few minutes and take your lid off. And then you can start gradually taking your jars out. Use one of these. And you're just going to reach down there. Be careful because it's going to be hot. And just have a place where already set up that you can put your canning jars. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up and remember to make it a great day.
day. Happy canning.